My neighbors, how do you do? I've told you before about how I'm kind of fond of 357 mag from a carbine. Magnum cartridges like 357 Magnum tend to be loaded with slower burning powders that gain a great deal from a 16 inch barrel. Today's test is Remington's 158 grain semi jacketed hollow point. This is an OG bullet design and Remington brings it with regard to velocity in this line. I think we're going to see solid performance from this one. Let's get out to the range and fire it from my wife's 16 inch Rossi model M92. All right, guys, this is super impressive. See all these big, huge fragments that come well off the main track there? That's what's up. Now, normally, fragmentation isn't great in a pistol round. However, this thing's like really trucking. So it's, in my opinion, kind of straddling the border between a rifle and a pistol. Sure, it's not quite technically a rifle, but it's getting real close. And you saw the size of that temporary stretch cavity on the high speed. That was absolutely impressive. Penetration, 20.1 inches. Of course, the retained weight isn't going to be 100% because we see a bunch of fragmentation, but there's still a pretty decent size chunk of lead here. Nice big expansion. Yes, it dropped some fragments, those fragments did come well off of the main track. There's not a lot to be desired here, and that is, that's a lot more than your typical pistol caliber carbine. That's, that's a whole different animal right there. Get you a nice close look at it. I'll dig these boogers and not all that out of there, get some better photos when we get home, but that is beautiful. By the power of Grayskull, this thing is a bomb. That was instant Mongo expansion along with substantial fragmentation and a gnarly temporary stretch cavity. We normally don't want to see fragmentation in handgun ammo because it can reduce penetration. And the fragments produced usually just stay really close to the main track without causing much additional wounding. But these fragments deviated way off the main track and they would have cut their own independent wound channels. The fragments we saw off this round are much more reminiscent of the sort of fragmentation seen in intermediate rifle cartridges than from handgun ammunition. To apply some perspective here, this bullet is both heavier and faster than some supersonic 300 blackout loads. That's not a trifling amount of energy. Of course, the semi-jacketed hollow point nose profile has a pretty awful ballistic coefficient, so it will lose velocity really quickly. That limits this load to eh, about 100 yards, give or take, even out of a carbine for practical purposes. But being able to shoot the same ammo in your handgun is a big plus. I tested this same load in a 4-inch revolver years ago, and it did well there too. There aren't a lot of loads out there that can perform adequately in both a revolver and a carbine because, well, if they do well at revolver speeds, they often break apart too much to penetrate adequately when fired from a carbine. Conversely, loads that do well in a carbine might not expand at all when fired from a revolver. Now, on paper, this is still a little short of that magic 2,000 foot per second threshold where Dr. Fackler proposed that the temporary stretch cavity starts to exceed the elastic limit of most tissues, causing tearing and permanent wounding. But I can't help but wonder if that limit 
might be lower with bullets that are wider and flatter than 223 and 30 caliber spitzer shaped bullets he based his opinion on. What do you guys think? This certainly looks a lot more than a typical handgun round. Is it closer to a rifle or a pistol? Do you enjoy watching gun related content on YouTube? You know that social media is a hostile place for anything spicier than Barry Manilow. The best thing that you can do to help keep YouTube from fading into the featureless beige that their marketing team seems to want is to engage with content at the margins. All those things that YouTubers ask you to do at the end of the video, those things are the metrics that drive YouTube's algorithm. So maybe you didn't enjoy this video, but please like, share, comment, and subscribe on every other gun-related video you watch today. If we don't hang together, we shall surely hang separately.